Good morning, good morning. Right, girly whirlies. They are currently trying to work out amongst themselves who is chief chicken. So the pecking order is being established as we speak. I've got to admit that currently we haven't settled on any names, so I'm just going to refer to them by their colours at the moment. Um, yeah, so the dark grey one who sat on top of the bucket appears to be uh, queen of the castle. She seems to be top dog at the moment, and the other two are kind of fighting out amongst themselves. The lavender one is in contention for top dog. I don't think the spotty one, the milfleur, is. But anyway, they're uh, just trying to work it out amongst themselves. <laughs> it's very entertaining seeing their little personalities and, like, <laughs> how they deal with stuff. Okay, first job out of the way, which is pretty handy, and I got to tick it off at the same time can't ask for more than that really <laughs> but that is going to help out because I keep writing on the list of things on little bits of paper and then they get lost and uh, things never get done so the first thing on that list other than put the board itself up is to sort out the carrot bed which are these chaps here so we have moved can we spin can we spin we had the oh arm there we had the um, incinerator the that thing down here and it, originally it was a fire pit and then they stopped us having fires up here so then we turned it into an incinerator pit uh, but now we're not allowed incinerators either and really what it was doing was just taking up space because you know we're not supposed to be having fires so when you do have a fire you're risking it and also we've got the school next to us and uh, it's basically pretty visible with the smoke so you can't have clandestine fires <laughs> so we're getting rid of it I'm going to replace it with a barbecue because we are still allowed to have barbecues but because we're going to have all this space kind of coming back this way i'm going to put two more beds in this end for carrots and possibly flowers possibly herbs something else but one of them is definitely going to be carrots and i'm going to take the turf out of the middle of this one or both of them really but i'm going to start with this one and i'm going to transfer it to here where we've got the ground is like, and we've got no grass because we've had the incinerator there. So that is my first job. Basically, I'm just gonna kind of hole punch this area where the carrot bed is going and cut out the same shape in the area where the grass hasn't been growing and just transfer the turf straight over in strips easy as pie. I never have a problem with transferring turf this way. As long as you take enough of the soil with it, like it always transfers, no problem. Give it a good soak in. Actually doing this and moving turf like this always makes me feel like I'm on time team, which is quite exciting. <laughs> it is a shame we're not allowed to have fires. There's been uh, quite a lot of, I'd say maybe comment and upset about it from allotments all across this area. I do understand why sort of on two levels, firstly, because of air pollution and people don't just burn garden waste or whatever. You always find somebody sticks a tire on a bonfire, don't you? So I do understand that. The other thing is a lot of the allotment sites around here and I guess all over the country are often against railway tracks. And at the end of the summer, normally when all the grass is really dry, if you get an escapee bit of spark or whatever from a fire and it goes onto the railway tracks, it causes enormous disruption because they have to stop the trains and all that. And I know that that has happened just down the road from me. It happened the summer before last and it caused an enormous kerfuffle. So I do understand why they're doing it, but it is a bit of a shame because there's nothing better than having a fire. And also it's the things that are diseased. So uh, stuff that we wouldn't normally compost, that's more the issue is like, we do get a lot of stuff that needs burning. If you're gonna be kind of cutting back trees and stuff, it's really nice to just be able to have a bit of a bonfire and get rid of the stuff rather than having to either stack it um, or like a lot of people having to take a lot of stuff to the dump, um, which isn't fantastic, but that's the way it goes. So yeah, we are not allowed fires. And in moving the incinerator, we're kind of like showing our acceptance <laughs> that fires are just not a thing anymore. Um, yeah, but luckily, luckily the barbecues are. And you can get quite a flame going with a barbecue. <laughs> right, I'm gonna give that a bit of a rest and uh, just go up the other end for the other thing which is happening this morning, which is the compost is gonna be turned. So mum's gonna turn the compost over. Echinacea's still looking gorge. Yeah, so 
We have a three bin compost system where we fill one bin and then it is turned into the second bin. So the whole lot is flipped over. So this is the full one. And then we will flip it into the bin that's next to it, which is this one, which is empty and waiting. And then once the compost is rotted right down, we put it into a third bin for usage. So the first thing to do is to take the front of this full bin so that we can access what's going on inside. It's really nice, you can see the strata as you pull that front board off. Like All the worms are in action mode. And when we flip this, it will rot down really quick in the other bin. So. Okay, chaps, are you ready for a bit of upheaval? Because things are about to happen. Hey, things are going down. I'm gonna leave mum to do the top half of that. She's just gonna kind of transfer it over and cut things up if there's any really big bits in there. Do it slowly, it'll probably go over a couple of days. We won't do it in one hit. Unfortunately, that sunflower is still collapsed, so I did try and stand it up, but it hasn't worked. So it's flowering on the grass. The bright yellow gladioli that were meant to be pastel colors are still going strong. And now I've cut the hole for this bit of grass. I'm gonna lift the turf where the grass is lush and move it onto the section where we didn't have any grass. This is the time team bit. Now the bed just goes straight back into that hole. It wasn't necessary for me to remove the grass. I'm going to put weed proof matting down and then compost on top of that so the grass would not have grown through weed proof matting and 30 centimetres of compost. I moved it purely because it was really good turf in this area and we had a ball patch. That's why I've moved the turf rather than it needing to happen for the bed. So I'm just going to level out the soil under here so that this is flat and line the bed. So I'm using this softer weed proof matting than the plastic woven one that you can buy. We did buy the plastic woven one a couple of years ago and it is actually what's underneath the polytunnel. It's also in some of the big compost bins that we've got at the end, but I'm really unimpressed with it and I particularly don't like the way that it starts shredding after a couple of years and just throws plastic everywhere, it's awful. Whereas this one, it is breathable, uh, so it lets the air and the water through and it's going to do the job perfectly well and not fray and send plastic everywhere. Because I've actually taken the grass out of the bottom of this, I didn't have to line it with weed proof matting. I could have just used, you know, the old plastic bags like I have with the leaf mould bins. But the plastic really attracts the slugs. They love that because it holds the moisture so well. So I'm hoping that this is going to be more free draining than the plastic and less attractive to the slugs. Anything that's less attractive to the slugs is a good thing in my eyes. I'm just using a little staple gun and stapling this to the edge. So obviously this is what, like 80 centimetres by 80 by 30. So it's quite a lot of compost needed, but we are going to use the spent potato compost. This is going to be a dedicated carrot bed and carrots don't love really rich soil. So we are going to be turfing out all the potatoes from the bags that we grew them in this year and sieving the soil straight back into here. But before we do that, it's lunchtime.
Some flowering bits. Are you here? Yes, I can see you. Okay. I'll just cut the other bit of flower off as well, I think. We are having proper allotment lunch today. <laughs> we always have uh, packet noodles in the shed. So they, they last really well, they store, they don't go off and um, they're really convenient. If, if for like example, we came up here this morning not expecting the weather to be that great and then we've got up here, it's gorgeous, it's lunchtime, we don't wanna go home. So having something like that in the cupboard in here just means that there's always something you can have for a bit of lunch if you don't fancy going home. And today is one of those days. So we just pick a bit of produce. It can be almost anything, really. But today we've got French beans and Thai basil and a bit of chilli. Mm. gorgeous day I've got to like drag myself out of this chair seriously next job is um, we are going to turf the rest of the potatoes out that are in the grow bags or not grow bags but the bags that they're growing in if you see what I mean outside the greenhouse and we're going to just um, empty them all out so we're gonna do each bag individually into the wheelbarrow and then sift it into the new bed Sifting might seem like we're like overkill, but um, for carrots, it's really worthwhile. Last year, was it last year or the year before? I can't remember, but um, mum seriously went to town with the end of one of the beds that we were gonna grow the carrots in. So we hadn't had a successful, we hadn't been successful growing carrots for such a long time. that mum actually like dug out a spitz depth like one half of the bed and sieved the soil back in I'm not kidding you and we had the most phenomenal carrots so we're gonna do pretty much the same again but so because we don't normally dig our beds it's normally just you know um, leaving the soil completely alone and putting the mulch on top we don't want to have to do that every time we plant the carrots because it kind of defeats the object of what we're trying to do so we are just designating this one bed and we're going to sieve it so there's no stones in it at all and uh, see how that works out but it means unearthing, we're gonna kind of do it in tandem with unearthing the potatoes because, I mean, it's the end of August, they really do need to come out and they're obviously not growing anymore. They're just sitting there looking very sad. So once I get myself out of this chair, that's what we're gonna do. <sighs> right, action. Drag a bag over.
depends how wet they are. <laughs> do you remember when mum look these are pink fur apple right they're quite smooth pink fur apple but they're definitely them do you remember when i spent months looking for pink fur apple potatoes in my bedroom when i first started doing the renovation in my bedroom and doing the paneling on the wall at the same time, I had all the potatoes chitting on my window ledge. And as I was painting, I was moving them from one place to another. A mum brought all the potatoes up and sowed them and told me she had not sown or not put, not planted, I should say, any, <laughs> any um, pink fur apples. So we were convinced they were still in my room somewhere. And I have hunted high and low. Lo and behold, <laughs> she, she planted them. She planted them. Are you a fan of waxy potatoes? I am, yes. Oh, right, okay. <laughs> Place, yeah. John still rose up the top there, doesn't he? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Remember of Kingston. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a carrot bed. <laughs> that was a bit of a process, but we did get some good potatoes out of it, more than I was expecting. And we got a whole mishmash of, oh, <laughs> that's good. Get them back in. We got a whole mishmash of different potatoes in here. Mum never labeled them, so we don't know what was in what bag, but we got a good selection. Hey, Lily. We are potato rich, pussycat. I've got to say, I think we've got more than I was expecting from that harvest because the potatoes were looking really sad. Some of the ones that we turfed out earlier, we had very, very slim pickings from. So this is a bit of a turn up for the books. The uh, raspberries have really, really appreciated all the rain we had earlier. Um, that whole month of rain, they've loved them. The raspberries and the beans, both. Oh, I've got a little chap on there. Ooh. Can you see him? Yes, I can. Where is he there? Yeah. It's been a long day up here and uh, we're going to head home. Just close up the greenhouse. It's meant to be cold again tonight despite it being a really lovely day. Hey girlies. Three girls. How are you doing? We'll see you in the morning. See you in the morning. <laughs>
morning. It is Friday morning. Um, yesterday, the video of Johanna's garden came out. I hope you enjoyed having a look around that. She's really feeling the lack of sunshine, but uh, I thought her garden looked absolutely magnificent. So there we go. <laughs> anyway, back home, back at the allotment, and just assessing my list of jobs with my beautiful new blackboard. And I've got three main things to do today. So first thing to say is that yesterday while I was editing Johanna's video, uh, mum sewed three rows of two Sean carrots and one Jean obtuse, I think it was. Anyway, uh, three loads of two, three rows of two Sean and one yellow carrot in the new carrot bed. So that is uh, the first thing that has happened without us being here. <laughs> and today's jobs are, I'm gonna finish off turning the compost I have got to, oh yes, the third job of the day is to build a barbecue. So where I've moved the turf to the other day, which is where we had the incinerator, just on the edge of that area, I'm going to um, build a barbecue out of the old uh, storage heater blocks. That's my jobs today. Better get on with it, I think. The first and most important job to do though is, is to go and say good morning to the whirly girly woos. So this is the carrot bed. Mum has sewn the four rows of carrots and the coriander on the side. It is a bit late for sewing carrots now, but we're going to be covering this with a cloche, so they should be fine. It'll extend the season out a bit. Um, I'm not going to start on this bed just yet because it's going to have herbs and flowers and things in. I've got a bit of time for that. Hey Lil. There was more time pressure on getting the carrot bed done because there's only so much that a cloche is going to help you if like <laughs> you're not planting them till november or something so mum is on compost duties today she started it off yesterday and she's made massive progress with it so yeah. it's pretty much done she's just in the final stages mm -hmm. got to take the last little bit out down this low though it's become really really soggy and heavy so it's been a bit of a task i'll let you do a little bit more now <laughs> <laughs> I've only got that little bit to do, really. Yeah, I know. It's not very much at all. But once this lot's out, we can start uh, just refilling this bin. And the process starts again. Oh. That's probably it, I think, yeah. So you're going to chuck the new stuff in? Oh, yeah. Start the new bag? That kind of thing. So there's some soil in there, but it doesn't matter, does it? No, just go in. Do you want me to do it? Can you lift it? Yep, I can. The never-ending process of compost making. <laughs> right, let's head back down to where I'm going to be making this barbecue, which is my big job for today, for these flowers. Not the colours we chose, they're not the pastels that we thought we were growing, but you know, <laughs> they're still looking good and the bees are loving them. So I was quite lucky this morning. I mean, I didn't have the camera on, which is a bit of a shame, but I went in and did my normal, like sitting down. That yellow bucket in the background there, that's what I sit on and have a good old natter to the girlies. And I came over, they all sat on the perch and um, they let me pat them quite happily. Didn't run away. I did approach very slowly in stealth mode, but once I was there, they were quite happy. So I'm feeling elated about that. I am using the old incinerator blocks. Now, if I spin this way, 
can you see these blocks here? That's what was surrounding. Sorry, there's a helicopter. Okay, I think it's gone. They are the blocks that I'm gonna to use to build the barbecue. They're old um, heat storage unit blocks. We used to have them around the incinerator, which is this thing, it used to be in the center here. But because that can no longer, like obviously having a fire is normally like the center of any kind of social situation. <laughs> no, but we used to have it here as kind of like a center piece of like the bit down here outside the shed. But it seems we're not allowed fires anymore. It's pretty pointless, a bit of a waste of space. So we've put these carrot beds in and I'm gonna make a barbecue along the edge here that is going to incorporate a barbecue that I rescued from an old job I did um, a couple of years ago now. But I, everything was a couple of years ago now because of COVID, but a couple of years before COVID, we'll say. Uh, a job I was doing, it was being thrown away. So um, I rescued it and it's a really good little barbecue, but it's not very stable. And also we want something a bit more permanent. So I'm gonna make kind of an encasing for it here. But first thing I need to do is level the ground because where I'm putting it, there's a bit of a slope. So that's next job. These are the blocks. They are fantastic for stacking and building stuff because they're so thick and so heavy. We've got them laid down here, but they're really, really chunky. So you can just lay them on top of each other without kind of having to stick them in any way. And they hold their shape perfectly. So this is where it's gonna go along here. And I'm just leveling off the ground to start with. It's gonna be a really, really simple shape just to encase the old barbecue and give it a bit more permanence and uh, stable it up a bit because when the barbecue falls over when you're mid cooking your sausages it is pretty devastating. <laughs> Okay chaps, we have a barbecue. So you can see the little portable one that I've encased in there, the galvanized chappy. And I've evened out the gaps at the back of the bricks, rest assured that would have just wound us all up if my gaps were all uneven. But yeah, so this has given it a bit more permanence, it's a bit more stable, and it's not gonna fall over in a hurry and we've got a couple of extra grids on top. And I'm using this as a bit of support to go across the back. I have evened up the gaps at the back, but I'm using all sorts of odd bricks. And at the moment, this is not OK. So I'm going to have to change that. <laughs> but there we have it. So things are coming together quite nicely down here. Barbecue, carrot bed. We've got girlies. Haven't we, girlies? It's funny, you see them facing off up against each other. They're just starting to try and work out the pecking order. So at first, I was utterly convinced that the dark grey one was going to be chief chicken like she was really on it she was facing up to everybody all the bluster and everything and I thought the bottom of the pecking order was going to be the mill fleur the speckledy one but it's shifting like it's this is a political game and like everybody's station is shifting so much at the moment it's fascinating to watch <laughs> okay so the barbecue is done and what is the most exciting thing about having a to-do list being able to cross things off oh yes Right, before we head off today, I've got some seedlings to plant out and they are going to go in the end here. They're charred seedlings, rainbow chard. I sowed them about four weeks ago, something like that, and they're looking very sad. They need to come out and I'm going to stick them in the side of 
the bed that we've already got the chard in. This is where the blighty tomatoes came out. Was it last week or two weeks ago? So I'm going to put them straight in here and hopefully they will catch up with their large chard friends next door. <laughs> I haven't had a problem planting small seedlings straight into the mulch, even though it's quite chunky and bulky. The only problem I do find is that the mulch is what keeps the soil underneath really moist. Like we've got a much better moisture retention rate having the mulch on top, but the mulch itself dries out quite quickly. So it's keeping the moisture underneath. But when you're planting young seedlings into it, it dries out really fast. And that's obviously not what you want for young seedlings. So keeping on top of the watering when you're planting into the mulch is just way more important than normal. Like you've got to be really on it. Mum's doing a bit of deadheading of the calendula. I mean, deadheading and weeding are like the two eternal tasks in the summer, aren't they? They're just never ending. <laughs> And this year we've got so many flowers, it's just like the task is about 20 times bigger than it normally is. So we've been doing a lot of deadheading. Right, back at this end of the allotment, I've just planted out the rainbow chard at the end. I've also put in some bold or beetroot, which were seedlings that I sowed at the same time as those ones. That I've put them in this gap where we had really poor parsnip germination, look, we've only got two. Underneath the parsnips, which we did get, we've got some of these onions, which I'm going to pick to make pickled onions today. So these are actually Red Baron, which if you sowed them at the right time of year and with good enough spacing, you would get proper, you know, large red onions from. But we did this last year where we planted them really late and planted them in plugs really close together. And they formed these just little tiny onions and they made some seriously fine pickled onions. So that's what I'm going to do with these lot. I'm having to pick them now anyway, because it's been so wet, they are starting to go a bit mouldy. So I want to get them out of the ground before they're damaged too much. But yeah, they are going to make a beautiful jar and it'll be ready about in time for Christmas, I guess. They're a gorgeous colour, aren't they? And the pickling liquor goes like a really ruby red when you're pickling them. So gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. Back to the girls, I'm like a magnet to them. Like every time I finish a job, I'm just over there straight away. Are you beautiful? That's what it is, isn't it? It's because you're so beautiful. I can't stay away. I can't stay away, girlies. But girlies, we are about to head off. So, um, see you later. See you later. Well, unbelievably, that was the last video of August. So, cheers. That's nice. Gin and tonic, but I've run out of lemon, so I've gone for mint instead. <laughs> Terrible. No lemons in the house. Yeah, so like I say, this is the last video of August, which just seems crazy. But the next video is going to be uh, on Thursday, obviously, and it's going to be seeds for September. And there's a surprising amount that can be sown in September. So like early, early autumn. I don't want to say early autumn, but kind of it is a bit really, isn't it? <laughs> God, that's depressing. Well, it's not depressing. I mean, I love autumn. Don't get me wrong. I really love autumn. But I love autumn when you've had a really good summer and you're like moving into the next one. When the summer hasn't been that great, autumn feels like it's coming way too soon. And <laughs> that is certainly the case this time. But I've got quite a lot of things on my mind to sow this September. Like September and early October for things to go into the polytunnel and things to go into the greenhouse and we've got the covered bed. We're really gonna try and utilize those spaces better this year than we did last year. So last year was the first year that we'd had, or the first winter that we'd had the polytunnel. We learned so much about that because the winter stuff, firstly, I got them in too late to begin with. So we had very little over the winter and then stuff that started happening really early spring. So like in March, or like end of February, March, we had loads of stuff coming from there, but we hadn't had anything over winter. So we're going to try and get that going this time so that we've got both stuff over winter and stuff for early spring. That's in the polytunnel. And I know also I can't grow lettuces in the polytunnel because it's just so humid in there that they all rotted off. So I'm trying to kind of work it out. I'm going to get the lettuces into the greenhouse. But anyway, I'll, you know, go on about this in Thursday's video when I'm talking about what's going to be sown in September. Basically loads of plans and we're going to try and cover all bases because we don't know what the year's going to do really. Is it going to be a really cold winter? Is it going to be a really mild winter? It's just no idea. But yeah, so having chickens back on the plot is as joyous as I thought it was going to be. 
it's amazing it has been so many years since we've had no chickens on the plot at all um and i was thinking about these girls these are our first ever girls that haven't had a handover with previous chickens so we've never i mean thank goodness we've never lost our chickens before like we lost Sappho and Delphi and Lua so this is the first time so since the very first chickens that we got we've always had like so for to begin with we had the Trace like the beautiful big fat red chicken Tracy and she was with us for ages and then we had another set of chickens and then they were the handover so for absolutely years and years and years we've never kind of had the space empty and then started again and it's quite interesting because a lot of the behaviors were kind of like handed down between the generations of chickens not that they were related generationally but you know like kind of they came into the chicken house and they were taught kind of or they picked up the behavior from the previous chickens and that includes things like shaking of the tin and coming running for the tin we're really discovering that it's going to be quite different with these girls because they're not because they're having to discover it all themselves so things like previously i always hang up vegetation like bits of uh, stuff that kind of has gone over at the allotment or bits of like courgette centers or any of that kind of stuff it gets hung in either like from the roof of the chicken house because it provides them with something a bit exciting to do or it goes into like a little cage on the side like a bird feeder but they can just peck at it well these girls are petrified every time it moves so that's not working at the moment we just have to kind of just give them stuff on the floor and they'll eat it that way but anything hanging up or anything dangly or anything moving at the moment they're really scared of it and that's never happened before we've never had chickens be afraid of that because obviously the other girls when they've gone into the house the other girls aren't afraid of it so they learn to kind of trust it a lot quicker but these girls really really don't trust the moving things <laughs> and they also don't like mealyworms which like my whole chicken keeping experience is based on bribing the chickens with mealyworms and these girls don't appear to like them so I'm gonna have to have a big rethink. <laughs> so in terms of getting the girls their greens because they can't go out at the moment obviously we're just keeping them in until we've got a good enough relationship with them that they will come to us when and then we'll have a, like a halfway point so we'll have um, their house that they're in we'll just have an extended run outside that's got really good protection in the sense that they can't escape and kind of get them that way and then make sure that they will come into the house you know it's going to be a really gradual process but at the moment they're just staying where they are in that space and so we want to kind of give them their greens if they're not eating them because they're dangly and scary we have to do it another way so where I moved the turf from underneath you know I did the carrot bed or well, the other bed that I haven't done yet I just took out like a block of turf and stuck it in a seed tray and put it in there and they love it that doesn't move and it's not scary so they're really happy like pecking away at the grass having a great time with that so that's at least something they're getting a bit of excitement from that way so I'm probably going to take the turf that's in there block it up into seed trays and then just kind of do kind of a cycle so one goes in and then they can rip that to shreds and come out again and it can recover and another one will go in and we'll just kind of put them on circuit for being um devoured by the chickens so anyway i am rambling like a crazy this afternoon and i shouldn't really be because i don't have a great deal of time left on the video to do this but um <laughs> the other thing about the girls is that i am being really indecisive about names which is um really unusual like normally every other set of chickens that we've got I've kind of seen them and the names have just like appeared like they just they just come into your mind like you know what they're supposed to be called these girls I'm having a terrible time with so I still haven't decided they are still nameless we're trying out a couple of names um I won't introduce them as anything until I've actually like we've settled on the names the other thing I've got to remember is mum is terrible at remembering names and she really had a hard time remembering the last lot of chicken names so I've got to try and make sure they're quite easy to remember but yeah so they still don't have any names um but we have only had them a week it's not like they're kind of um been here for a month and we haven't got them names but uh I had a lot of suggestions of people saying I should just call them whirly girly and joy or some combination of the three but that would feel very disingenuous because I call all the chickens the whirly girlies of joy so it's not, it's not a very good identifier definitely find that 
since we've had the girls back on there though in this last week even though the weather's been rubbish apart from the the two really gorgeous sunny days we have which we, which were just bliss um the rest of the time it has been pretty great like today it's just overcast and a bit rainy but it has meant that we've spent so much more time up there already like you just having the girls on the plot just makes it um just a joy to be up there so we're already noticing the difference of having uh chickens back on the plot which is really really lovely so talking about the weather being a bit pants i uh, made the barbecue yesterday or was it yesterday was it the day before oh, all the days are blurring into one uh it was the day before so yesterday was the bank holiday monday i hope everyone had a marvelous bank holiday the weather was terrible here so it was going to be allotment drinks up on not on our plot but on somebody else's plot um on the afternoon of bank holiday monday and our plan was to kind of test drive the barbecue in the earlier in the days like for lunch and we're going to have a go and it's going to be quite looking forward to it and then like monday came around and it was just grey and horrible so we ditched the idea of um of the barbecue at lunchtime and just went for drinks instead <laughs> So we went for drinks and then just went to the pub because it was too cold. I mean, I didn't find it particularly cold, but mum was freezing. She had a little blanket over her knee and everything. So, so yeah, that is about this week. Uh, next week, I'm planning to do a bit more of an introduction to the chickens because we're kind of, like I was saying, you know, they're kind of tussling it out to work out who's going to be top chicken at the moment. Um, I feel like that's going to be coming to some sort of resolution fairly soon and like, trying to identify their little personalities was sort of starting to come around to that. And I'm spending loads of time just sat in the chicken house like I did the editing of Johanna's garden video just sat in the chicken house which is uh which was nice so we're kind of getting to know them and next week I'm planning to do a bit more of an introduction hopefully they're gonna have names by next week and I'll be able to be like and this is so and so and this is so and so but this week was a bit of a kind of a between week and we're not entirely sure where we're going with any of it yet so I thought I'd hold off for a week and do some practical jobs uh next week's got more practical jobs actually on the plot um we are gonna have a barbecue even if it's raining, we're going to have a barbecue next week. And I'm also going to tidy out the shed because um, firstly, how wonderful is the to-do list? I'm pretty pleased with that. But I've also got something else to put up in the shed. And at the moment, the shed has just got into a terrible mess. Like it's one of those things, you know, you, you tidy it all and it all looks wonderful and pristine. And then slowly, slowly, slowly you start kind of not putting things back where they should be. And you open the door and something just goes on the side and we've got loads of seed packets and things which were the stuff that we sowed in August all that needs to be brought home and I just need to have a really good clear out because the spider webs in there at the moment have got to the point where you're like pulling taking something off the side and it's like you know with that amount of spider web behind it, it's like glued to the wall marvelous so I've got to do big shed tidy we're gonna have a barbecue uh it's just loads of stuff to do at the moment and I'm really motivated to be up there and at the allotment and just doing stuff because we have girls and it's lovely. I think that's me over and out, chaps. Thursday's video, seeds for September. We've got masses to do in September. It's gonna be busy, busy, busy. We're about to embark on autumn. Cheers.